It's actually a fallacy that all wine improves with age, especially red wines. I think I saw a stat once that said 99% of wines made are designed to be drunk within five years of the release date. Producers around the world, they usually want to make a fresh wine that they can really move, so there's a lot of turnover. Usually at the top of their portfolio, a small proportion of the wine they make is age-worthy. If you look at all the wines on the shelf when you go to a specialty shop, that's such a small proportion of the total wine that's produced and consumed around the world. And a lot of that isn't made to be aged past five years. If you go by volume, most of the wine made around the world is inexpensive bulk wine that can be shipped to different origins, bottled under specific labels. These wines are designed to be drunk right when you take them off the shelf. However, ageability is one thing that distinguishes wine from any other type of beverage on the planet. Just a few months ago in my collector group, we opened a 1907 Madeira, which was amazing. You open it up and it just, the aroma just filled the room. It was really a moving experience. A lot of the most collectible wines in the world are dry red wines. That's what people keep in the cellar so they improve with age. However, for me personally, I think the most disappointing experiences I've had with aged wine have been dry red wines. I've been wowed a lot more with white wines and almost always impressed with sweet or fortified wines. The factors that help wine age is number one, the raw material. Better quality grapes is going to produce better quality wine which has more potential potential to age. You gotta think about when you're cooking, if you use a high quality product, a high quality raw material, you don't have to season the food as much. Other factors are sugar and alcohol. That's why sweet wines, fortified wines that have higher alcohol, these are the wines that are most dependable in terms of how they're gonna age. Other factors include tannins, which you get from either the oak barrels, the skins, the seeds, and the pulp and then the acidity, that tartness, those things really add a mainframe to the wine to keep it from falling apart. Red wines generally lose color as they age. White wines tend to gain color. The most age-worthy red wines are usually the most concentrated, made with riper grapes. What happens is some of that fruit starts to fall off. The wine starts to lean out as it develops in the bottle. I have noticed that with aged red wines, I feel the alcohol a lot less. I don't get as flush in my cheeks. I think that's because the tannin have broken down. I've got seven wines here. A couple of them are from my own cellar, so have personal stories. A couple of them were samples because wineries sometimes re-release wines. They keep them back in the cellar and then they sell them to you aged and ready to drink. Let's see what they're like. I'm going to start with the youngest wines and move on to the oldest wine, which is 2008. I also have a Napa Cabernet here from a great vintage 2013, and I've never tasted the producer before, so I'm looking forward to see how it shows. First up here, I have no idea if this wine's going to be good. This is an inexpensive red wine. This is the Fronton de Oro Tradicional Tinto Red from the Gran Canary Islands, 2015. This is made from the grape Lista Negro, also known as Pais or the Mission Grape age three months in American Oak. When this was first released, I think it was maybe 17 bucks. I think currently it's maybe $20. My friend gave this to me actually when I visited him in New Jersey. I've always found the whites from the Canary Island to be more exciting than the reds, but we'll see how this is. The Canary Islands technically part of Spain, but actually they're a group of islands that are closer to Africa. Super high elevation vineyards grown in volcanic soils. Let's see how this is. I have no idea how this will be. Sometimes wines like this can be really disappointing. I'm not Coravin them because I have so many of them. I'm not gonna drink all of them. <laughs> Higher quality red wines that are designed to age include things like Burgundy, made of Pinot Noir. Obviously, some New World Pinot Noirs age really well. Bordeaux, especially those based on Cabernet Sauvignon. Syrah actually does pretty well. And Barolo and Barbaresco made from the grape Nebbiolo. This, you can tell, has aged a little bit. It's a little lighter in color than I remember. I mean, I haven't had this for a long time. I think the current release is 2021. You see some brown reddening around the edges or it starts to get a little clear. That's also a sign of aging. Let me shake this out a little bit because what happens is when you pour these aged wines, sometimes they can be impressive in the glass and sometimes they just fall right apart. Let's take a look and see what kind of aromas we got going on here. Pretty nice, actually. Sour cherry, smoke. A lot of smoke, a lot of black licorice. Maybe just a touch of sweet tobacco. Sometimes you get tomato leaf type flavors when red wine age. I don't have a ton of it here. The smoke really, I mean, it's really smells like smoke. Like almost like campfire smoke. The fruit's good. I'm going to shake it out a little bit longer, see how it is. 
This is an example of a red wine that actually has improved with bottle age. It's only, what, eight, nine years old. I remember it was just kind of fruity, unique when I first tasted it. I've been keeping this a cellar for no reason. My friend Drew DiMatteo, who's a hardcore wine geek now, he lives out in Sonoma, gave me this. It doesn't have a super long finish, but it is surprisingly alive. A lot of times with aged wines, the fruit starts to fall off from fresh fruit and the more dried fruit flavors, or so it might fall off completely. Aged red wines generally have a nicer, smoother mouthfeel because the tannins start to break down. I think this is solid. Is this a world beater? No, but I think it's delicious. To me right now, I'd be scoring it like an 89 point wine. It's super enjoyable. The fruit kind of falls off a little bit on the back end, but I think it's really good. I'm surprised, at least in Negro. And I don't taste a lot of oak. Let's move on here. A winery library release. This is the Shahalem Ridgecrest Vineyards, Ribbon Ridge, Oregon, Pinot Noir, 2015. This is available at the winery for 70 bucks. So re-release has a nice little screw cap, 2015, the same vintage. Let's see how this is. I'm gonna taste out of the same wine glass except Pinot Noir. I'm gonna use a Pinot Noir glass. This is from the Willamette Valley in Oregon. Pinot Noir is a grape with low tannins, but it has high acidity. That's what helps it age. I find with high quality Pinot Noirs, in the 10 year range, they don't really age that much. The acidity is so high, it really helps preserve them. Riesling are some of the most longest lived dry wines in the world because they have piercing acidity, that along with Vouvray, which is based on Chenin Blanc. This definitely shows some age. When I think of high quality Pinot Noir, I think of more bright red raspberry flavors, maybe a little sour cherry. This is definitely more dried cherry flavors. A lot of tobacco, I a lot of tobacco, tons of earthiness almost like mud, so to speak. I know that doesn't sound appealing, but it's good, trust me. A little bit of ash. It's not bright and pretty, it smells pretty dense. Let's see what the alcohol is here. 14.3, more concentrated for a Pinot Noir. Mm. It still has tangy acidity, has significant weight. Sometimes fresh Pinot Noir, the acidity kind of slices through and you feel like razor blade on your gums. This does not. Again, has a rounder mouthfeel. Oh, this is gonna be fun to discover how these wines come along. On the palate, because of the acidity, there's more bright red fruit flavors than there were on the nose. On the palate, it actually tastes like a fresh Pinot Noir, except it's a little bit more rounded. Again, I think it smells a lot more aged in the nose than it is on the palate. Let me give it another whirl here. Honestly, this is well put together. For me, 92 points, and especially if you want the chance to taste an aged Pinot Noir, it's nice that wineries are able to do this and sell direct. Just the tans just massage the palate a little bit, but they're not too heavy. That's pretty nice, let's move on. Next, we have a really odd grape. I've kept this in the cellar for a long time. This is the Lagvenari Utskaneri Sapere 2013 from the country of Georgia. Utskaneri Sapere is a high acid grape from Imereti, Western Georgia. Georgia is considered to be one of the birthplaces of wine. Winemaking goes back at least 8,000 years ago. When I bought this, the current release of the wine, it was $17 that was in Georgia. I think he's raised his prices a little bit. From minimal intervention producer, wines are made in quavery, Georgian clay pots that are buried underground. This guy's a medical doctor turned winemaker. He only does tastings in his home. I just saw him actually a couple months ago when I was in Georgia. I love this grape. We'll see how these wines age. You know, there's a argument, these natural wines, these wines made in quavery, how well are they going to age? There's a grape in Georgia called Saparavi, which is dark, high tannin, and high acidity age as well. Otskunuri Sapere. I like this grape a lot. There's just not a lot of good examples. Let's give this a go here. Okay, this definitely has some age. It's got like this waxy characteristic. Dried red plums, just a hint of rubber. I know that that can be considered a fault to some winemakers, but here it's really attractive. Kind of like a black raspberry, dark cherry type of flavor. This nose, hold on, this nose I feel like will fall apart a little bit. I don't know, just something about this wine. A little bit of smoke, ash, let's give it a go. God, this is why wines are so weird. Up front, totally unique. The acidity comes through, it feels so bright, so delicious. However, the fruit kind of falls off and then there's just acidity. Yeah, the fruit falls off, I'm just kind of left with tannin. The nose, the front of the palate are interesting at first, but something I, I don't get super excited about, like, I mean, right now, to me, it's someone kind of like in, 
87 point type of wine. I think it's still good. Just everything hasn't come together completely. Again, I think this wine's designed to be drunk a little bit younger, and that's the thing. Sometimes when you open these wines, especially... I'm on a lot of press trips with a lot of wine writers and usually when we're at producers or different shows, they're usually opening older wines. And sometimes you're sitting there and people are so proud when we open it, the wine can be a little bit disappointing and it's like, oh, what do I say to the person? I like the producer a lot. That wine is just not awful, but it's not getting me super excited. Let's move on. A grape that has the history of aging really well and one of my favorite grapes, you know, is Sangiovese. This is the Avagnonesi Vino Nobile de Montepulciano 2013. 13, so we're talking a little over 10 years old. This comes in at 55 bucks, available from the winery, some of the local restaurants. If you message them, if you're interested, you can get a hold of it. This wine is always great value for money, 25, 30 bucks for the current release. Cool label that it's, again, it's a re-release. I think they only released 700 bottles, so I'm excited to taste it. I just have to clarify, but in the past, Avignonesi and Beyond Santi actually sponsored to do a video to go out there and make a little travel vlog. For me, it was the greatest video that I've ever made, but they're not paying for any of this. They just sent this to me. They didn't even say, put it on video they just said you want to try it I said what the heck I'm doing an aged wine video let's give it a go a lot of people say that you should decant age wine what happens a lot of times is decanting is made so you can separate the sediment from the wine however when it comes to aged wine I like to pour it in the glass because it develops over time and you might miss something Let's give this a go. For those of you that don't know, Vino Nobile de Montepulciano is one of the greatest Sangiovese-based wines along with Chianti Classico, Brunello. The latter two get a little bit more notoriety, I think, because the quality amongst Vino Nobile producers can be quite varied, but they can be excellent wines. Let's give this here a smell. This smells similar to this. I don't have a wine here that's full of tomato leaf, which I love in aged red wines. A little bit of waxiness, a little bit of forest berry type flavors. Sour cherry, sour plum, earth, dried plum. This is super, super earthy. Maybe a little bit of cedar, complex. You can tell this wine's aged, but it's not over the hill. This is different than this wine. The flavors start out similar where you have this brush of acidity and bright fruit flavors, but if the fruit carries on, it goes from fresh fruits in the back where it's still lingering, it turns into dark fruit, the tannins are round. This, I mean, this is really some not really surprising. I am biased because I like Sangiovese. <laughs> Now you also have to know your own palate. Some people don't like aged wines in the past. I used to love aged wines. I think I sometimes would love wines that were a little too aged. Sometimes the fruit fall off. They were all tertiary. Tertiary just means all the aromas that develop while it's in the bottle. You get forest floor notes, mushroom, taba more tobacco type flavors. The fruit starts to fall off. Here, this definitely has aged wine flavors, so it's not gonna be for everybody. I personally right now am really loving it. I'm 92 points on this right now, showing as it is. I think this is in a great drinking window. I think you drink it right now. Drinking windows are like a bell curve. What happens is wines start to develop, they reach their peak and they fall down. Sometimes with cheaper wines, that happens quickly. Could happen within a year, boom, it hits the peak and it starts to fall down. With other great wines, sometimes they start to rise slowly, 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 but surely, and sometimes they stay right at that peak and they'll stay there for a while before they start their slow decline. This wine right now I think is like up near the top of the peak. I don't know how much more benefit it will get from staying in the bottle, but I like it a lot. Really nice wine. And it's cool, it's a wine you can get. Let's move on. Another wine you can also get from the family's website. This is a Napa Cab from an Epic Vintage 2013. This is the Duehi Family Napa Valley Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon from Yuntville 2013. This comes in a hundred bucks. I know this wine's made in tiny quantities. This producer is actually a viewer of the channel. He contacted me, he said, I just want you to taste my wines. I didn't know that this video was coming up. He sent me a few bottles. I have not tasted this yet. Let's give it a go. Epic Vintage in Napa Valley, 2013. I remember when I was last in Napa, I did a vintage perspective tasting, tasting blind, the 2013, 14, and 15s. And the 13s were the most tannic. It was a great vintage in Napa. Let's uh, see how this is 10 years later. 
Couple of things, Cabernet Sauvignon is high in acidity and it's high in tannin. And in Napa Valley, it can be quite concentrated. That's why the wines age pretty well. And you know what? I've had some gorgeous Napas from the 70s, even the 60s that were extraordinary. This is dark in color. If you don't know this producer, Napa has over a thousand registered producers. What happens sometimes is some people just buy fruit or buy wines, bottle it under their own family label. I know he owns the vineyards. Let's give this a smell here. Let's see if it's Napa Cabbie. It is Napa Cabby, and here's the thing, this does not smell aged at all. It's dark, black cherry, tobacco, a little bit of capsicum. This is nice. <sighs> a little bit of leather clove. This is quite complex. It's rich, it's viscous, it's dark, it's inky. Cabernet Sauvignon is also one of those grapes that needs to be aged in oak to show its best. The tannins from the oak barrels polymerize with the tannins and the fruit in the Cabernet Sauvignon and there's a nice little marriage. So I think you get some of the clove, some of these tobacco notes. It smells really good, really good. Now here's the thing. You gotta know your style of wine. Napa Cabernet Sauvignon, bigger, bolder, not typically the type of wines that I love to drink. You cannot deny the quality here. There's still so much fruit. There's notes of dark chocolate and mocha on the palate. What I like about this is the 2013 Napa Cabs usually are pretty tannic, pretty powerful. These tannins are round. They really massage the palate. They give that smooth feeling. Long finish, lots of fruit. This has a little more acidity than I'm used to in some Napa Cabernet Sauvignons. It can just be big, round, and ripe. It's not humongous, but it is a big, full-bodied wine. For me, 93 points. That's how it's showing right now. What I like about this wine, it's distinctively Napa. It's not Bordeaux. It just you, you can tell just by tasting it, it's Napa. Sometimes there's an argument that Napa Cabs might be too ripe, too lacking a city. They really age well, but I do think Napa Cabernet is such a unique wine. It's delicious now, and it does age. And I think this wine with the acidity, the fruit really hasn't become super dried yet. I think it actually can improve in the bottle. That's a nice wine. Let's move on. Next up is a wine I picked up a long time ago at the start of my wine career from Croatia. This is the Zlatan Otok Srdjenak. 2010 from Croatia. I know that the current vintage of this wine is important in the US, can be found for about 40 bucks in Croatia, it's like 20. Sorjanek Kastelenski is the name for Zinfandel. Zinfandel is also the same grape as Primitivo and Puglia. The research shows that it's from the Dalmatian coast. Call it Sorjanek Kastelenski in Croatia, they also call it Tribidrag. They go down further south into Montenegro. One of its origins is too. There they call it Kratosia. Zlatno talk is is one of the pioneers of Croatia. He was one of the first private producers in Croatia. He passed away relatively young. I know when I first visited, this was 2015. I, he just recently died when I visited him. So let's take a look here. Zlatno Talk is a fairly big producer. They make a lot of Plavac Mali. Their main winery is pretty amazing. It's on the south side of Huar with slopes down to here. They even have a little marina where you can pull up your boat and eat. I did not buy this wine because it's my style of wine. I just thought it was a great story. Let's see, it's been a long time since I've tasted even the current release of this wine. This smells, I had the lowest expectations for this wine, but it smells good. Dried strawberry, a lot of earth, a lot of Garig type notes. Some violets, this actually smells like, kind of like an aged shot enough to pop, seriously. <sighs> I like how it's really ripe, dried strawberry flavors are coming through. It smells good, it smells rich though, like it's gonna be big. Let's give this a go here. Wow. This is the wine that has the most aged notes on it. You get a lot of tomato leaf, a lot of sweet tobacco type flavors. I really like this. When you work in the wine business, you're tasting a lot of young wines, like just a disproportionate amount of young wines and sometimes you forget the magic of aged wine. This is actually, hold on. There is high alcohol. You're gonna feel a little bit of heat there. I think objectively, this might be the best wine I've tasted so far, 93 plus. And I had the lowest expectations for this wine and maybe also the wine from the Canary Islands, but it's good. I'm 93 plus on it. It's really good. This video is uh, doing the opposite of the point I was trying to prove. I actually thought a lot of these wines would just be completely disappointing. And I would say, see, <laughs> again, <laughs> these are all, besides the Canary Islands wine, these are more high quality premium wines. The next 
wine we have here is a wine that I see is available in France. This is the Le Roc de Cana from Cahors in France. This is the Sangui Christi 2008, made from 100% Malbec. Malbec is from southwestern France around Cahors, then eventually it made its way to Bordeaux. High in tannin, high in acid, so therefore these wines usually should be aged for a long time, just like another grape from that area called Tanat. Look for the wines of Mataran. They're really inexpensive wines, but they can age super well. This is, I see, available for 30 bucks. Let's see if it's good at that kind of price. Here's the thing about aged wine too, sometimes they're just fun to taste and there's a difference between how impressive they are to taste versus what I'd like to drink. I think objectively the wine with the bigger wow factors were the Napa Cab and the Surianek, those were my highest scored wines, but the wines I probably want to drink, maybe the Sangiovese or the Pinot Noir. Let's move on to the Malbec, it is dark, inky in color. This has a lot of tomato leaf flavors. You definitely get the age here. Sweet tobacco, this has kind of like a, a weediness type to it. A lot of tomato leaf, like dried tomato leaf flavors. Or ever, if you've been in a tomato garden, you smell the vines. I remember one of my friends who's Mexican, he's a wine grape grower in Mexico, and he was married to a woman from Bordeaux, and he's like, man, I just love the smell of aged wine. It's almost like, I wanna make a cologne out of it. <laughs> Let's give this a go here. Inky, dark, this definitely has some waxiness you get. This is a wine that's gonna be for people that really love aged wine. Got way more tobacco, tomato flavors. The fruit starts to fall off a little bit. This is a type of wine that was opened in front of me. I'd think, oh, I'd feel very thankful if the owner of the winemaker opened it for me. I don't think it's the best aged wine in the world. You still get tons of tannin. I think it's very delicious. It's not, obviously it's just not blowing everything else away. For me, it's more like an 89 point type wine at the moment. If the fruit came through all the way and mixed with those tobacco and tomato leaf flavors on the back end, I'd give it a higher score. Good, super complex. I just, I'm, I'm wanting a little bit more from it, but that's how it is. So tell me, do you prefer to drink young wines or do you prefer to drink aged wines when it comes to reds? Do you have any memorable stories about opening up an old wine? Drop it in the comments below.